If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking to learn about what you're supposed to do on a certain boss or all bosses in Mount Hyjal. There's five bosses in this raid and a lot of trash, so let's not waste any more time and get right into it. So, before we talk about the bosses, and by all means feel free to skip forward using the chapters on the timeline of this video if you're only interested in bosses, but before we talk about those, let's talk about the trash here, because this raid is very unique when it comes to handling trash. The way this raid works is you're gonna talk to the leader NPC of whatever camp you're in, and that will trigger the trash to start spawning. Once you do that, there's always going to be 8 waves of mobs followed by a boss, with the exception of the last boss, Archimon, who doesn't have trash before him, so you just run to him and kill him. There's probably going to be super advanced strategies developed by players over time on how to handle the trash as quickly and efficiently as possible, but for now, I'll just tell you about the basics. So yeah, the trash in this raid is not very hard, but here's the catch. If you wipe at any point during this raid, be it on one of the waves of trash or during a boss, you're gonna have to not only redo the whole 8 previous waves of trash, but you'll also have to wait a whopping 8 minutes for the leader NPC to respawn. This is why you always hear that Mount Hajjol is infamously known as the worst raid in WoW. So yeah, the number one thing you want to avoid doing in this raid is wiping, especially during a boss. That's gonna set you back tens of minutes at minimum. But anyways, let's talk about the trash. The trash in this raid is really not very hard, and the NPCs around will help you out. And if you're getting overwhelmed, remember that you can just keep one mob alive or mind control it while people are getting ready for the next wave. As I said, there's 8 waves of mobs and each wave spawns a different type and amount of trash. So let's talk about some noteworthy mobs. First, we have the shadowy necromancers. You can have a priest mind control those and buff someone with unholy frenzy. Be careful if you receive this though, because not only will you generate a lot more threat, but this debuff itself deals 500 damage every 2 seconds. You also have abominations to keep an eye on. Those have an aura on them that deals nature damage, and if there's a lot of them on one spot, your healers might start struggling to keep the melees alive. And finally, you have frost worms. Those only spawn on the horde camp once you reach it, and since they only attack from the air, this means you're gonna have to have a ranged DPS tank them. Any range DPS will do for this, just remember to have them step away from the raid to not have the frost bolt hit everyone. And that's pretty much it for the trash. Alright, let's now talk about the first boss, Rage Winter Chill. For this guy, it is recommended for everyone to have a Medallion of the Alliance or of the Horde equipped before engaging this boss, unless you're a Paladin or a Mage. The reason for this is because Rage Winter Chill has an ability called Ice Bolt, which deals an immense amount of damage. It also stuns you and deals more damage over time. Ice Bolt victims usually die within 2-3 to three seconds from the dot, so the way to survive this realistically is to have this trinket, or to bubble out of it as a paladin, or to blink out if you're a mage as well. Other than that, for this boss and any upcoming bosses in fact, make sure to pull the boss to the NPC leader of the camp you're on, Jaina if you're on the alliance side or Thrall if you're on horde side. Also, stay spread in a circle around the boss, as far away from him as you possibly can be. This is because of the ability called Death and Decay. This is an AoE circle that the boss drops on a random player, and it deals 15% of your health per second. This particular ability is annoying, because the color of the AoE is very faint, and you can barely see where it ends, so make sure to keep an eye on it and move out of it as soon as possible. Other than that, you also have a Frost Nova that the boss does, another reason to be spread. And that's pretty much it for Rage Winter Chill. Not a very hard fight, remember to re-equip your normal trinket after this fight is over. Moving on to Anitheron. Again, make sure to pull the boss to Jaina, and make sure you're spread even evenly around the boss. In particular, make sure to have healers evenly distributed in a circle around the boss. The reason for this is because of the ability called Carrion Swarm. About every 15 seconds, the boss casts this. It's a cone-shaped AoE starting from the boss, and it deals 3 to 6k shadow damage and applies a 15 seconds debuff which reduces healing done by 75%. So that's why it's important to have healers evenly spread around the boss, so that as few of them get hit as possible. 
Other than that, you also have the Towering Infernals. Those spawn on random people and they stun everyone around them once they spawn. The thing is, once the boss dies, those Infernals also die with him. So you want to completely ignore them and have a Paladin tank tank them away from the boss and everyone else. Why a Paladin tank? Because they're the best tanks to quickly range taunt with Avenger's Shield and Exorcism. And why do you want to tank them away from the boss and everyone else? Mainly because they have Immolation, which deals a lot of fire damage every 2 seconds around them. And also because they profit from the boss's vampiric aura, a buff that the boss puts on him that heals him every time he melee hits. Although that's not a big deal for those infernals since we're not killing them anyways. The main reason why they're tanked away is because they do AoE fire damage. Other than that, the boss also has a sleep which he puts on 2 to 3 random players for 10 seconds. Unfortunately, when I tried this on the PTR, I forgot to equip my PvP trinket to see if you can remove it with those. So if you know, please drop it in the comments. Moving on to Khazragal, the first boss of the Horde camp. I should mention, now that you made it to the Horde camp, if you wipe or for whatever reason enter the raid at this stage, make sure to use the portal on the right from now on. That will teleport you to the Horde camp. The Alliance camp is overran with mobs now. Anyways, Khazragal is mainly a tank and spank boss. The only real difficulty of this boss is Mark of Khazragal. This is a debuff that the boss applies on all mana users 45 seconds into the fight. Then 40 seconds after that, 35 seconds after that, etc. until you wipe, acting kind of like a soft enrage. So, what this ability does is it drains 600 mana per second for 5 seconds. That's 3000 mana. If your mana is reduced to 0 by this debuff, you'll explode, dealing 10 to 11k shadow damage to yourself and around you, very likely dying and killing everyone around you. So, your goal is to never let that happen by having your mana always stay above 3 to 4k. And if you see that your mana is too low, make sure to run away from everyone so only you die and you don't kill everyone else around you. That's pretty much it for this boss. He also has a cleave, so make sure to never be in front of him, especially when the tank is moving him to thrall at the start. And he also has a war stomp, which stuns everyone in melee range for 5 seconds. But that's about it. Very simple fight as long as everyone manages their mana correctly. Moving on to Asgalore. This boss is also very much tank and spank. First off, make sure to spread around the boss because he periodically casts Rain of Fire on a random player. So stay spread and move out of that quick. The boss also has a cleave, so make sure to never be in front of him. The main mechanic on this fight is the debuff Doom. This is cast on a random player about every 45 seconds. When this expires, the target dies and spawns a Doom Guard. If any Doom Guards are left alive when the boss dies, they simply despawn. So you want to ignore them and tank them away from everyone else. So how you deal with this is you have an off tank stand away from everyone else when a player gets the Doom debuff, they need to quickly run to the off tank and wait until they die. When the player dies, the off tank needs to taunt the Doom Guard and simply ignore them until the boss is dead. You can take them on any NPCs that aren't aggroed on the boss, so that hopefully they get aggro on the Doom Guard and you don't have to deal with him at all. But that's pretty much it on Asgalore. He also does a silence for 5 seconds, which can be resisted with Shadow Resistance. So, priests make sure to buff everyone one with shadow protection before the fight. But that's all there is to it. After you kill this boss, you'll be glad to know that you don't have to fight any more trash, because the way to the last boss is wide open. So, Archimonde, before you start this fight, talk to Tyrande and pick a tier of the goddess from her. More on this in a minute. So, first off, what you need to know is that Archimonde hits like a truck. He deals 9 to 10k damage on a full tier 5 tank, but he never deals crushing blows thankfully. So, you really need a a ton of healing on the tank at all times. There's no tank swap abilities on this fight, so only one tank is needed. Up to you on how many healers you want to assign to them. Past that, the other important thing to know during this fight is you really don't want anyone to die at any point. And that's because of the boss's soul charge. Depending on which class dies, the boss will deal 4.5k damage, followed by either a silence, 50% damage increase, or mana burn. So if someone dies, this can start a trickle down effect where another player dies from soul charge, then another one, etc. So you really need to avoid dying at all costs during this fight. 
So past that, the boss has four main abilities you need to worry about. The first one, and the most important probably, is Air Burst. This is an ability that the boss casts quite frequently on a random player. And when it hits, it sends said player and everyone around them in a 15-yard circle flying in the air. The fall is high enough to kill you. Thankfully, Turanda give you the Tear of the Goddess item. The thing is, this item applies a slow fall effect on you, but only for a mere two seconds. So you don't want to use it too early and not too late either. A good rule of thumb to know when to use this item if you get air burst is to wait until you're at the apex of the jump. And when you start falling, count 3 seconds and then use the tier. There's also weak auras that make this quite easy. Link will be in the description. The second ability is Doomfire Strike. This is very similar to Supremus Molten Flame. It's a moving trail of fire that spawns from the boss's feet and travels in the direction of a random player. Player. If you step on the fire, you'll receive a debuff that takes for 2.4k fire damage every 3 seconds. In theory, this is easily avoidable until you take the next ability into account. Fear, which is an 8 second AoE fear to the entire raid every 40 seconds. So depending on your RNG, you could be feared into a fire and die from it. So what you want to do is hug your shaman so that Tremor Totem breaks you out of the fear. But also try to stay away from the fire as far as you can, just in case. The last ability is Grip of the Legion. Basically put, you want to decurse this as quickly as you can. This deals 2.5k damage every 2 seconds over 5 minutes. So you want to have people who can decurse evenly spread around the room so that they can reach any close by player who gets this debuff. This debuff may seem not very dangerous on its own, but when you put it in context with everything else happening, it can easily be a reason for a wipe. So stay on top of the decurses as much as you can. But yeah, that's Archimonde. To recap real quick, avoid dying or having people dying at all costs to not have a trickle down effect and wiping the raid. When affected by air burst, make sure to use your tears of the goddess not too soon and not too late either. Avoid the traveling flames around the boss and stay close to your local shaman to have the fear removed by tremor totem. And finally, decurse grip of the legion as fast as possible. This boss doesn't have a lot of HP, he has less than gruel actually. So just just stay alive, play clean, and you'll win. Unfortunately, this is one of those bosses that will never really be on farm, because of how much RNG is involved with it. So you'll get better at it over time, but wipes will inevitably happen, even at the end of Sunwell probably. And that's everything in Mount Hyjo. I hope you guys found this video informative. We also have a similar guide for Black Temple, so make sure to check it out if you haven't already. With that, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic Wild Curios channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.